Hi, I'm Maya. Hi, I'm Georgia. And, and this, this is Ningaloo Outlook. Georgia and I are university students who share a love of books, the beach, and most of all, turtles. Especially if they're tiny. Travel with us deep below the waves to explore what hidden treasures lie among the reef, whales, turtles and fauna. A special thanks to CSIRO, Woodside and the Ningaloo Reef Research Team for chatting with us about the magic of the reef. So let's dive into it. In this episode, we speak with the wonderful Dr Damien Thompson. Damien is the project leader who leads the four Ningaloo Reef Research Divisions. He is a coral reef ecologist with expertise in biodiversity and the ecology of corals. So, hey guys, we are here with Damien. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks very much for having us in today. Yeah, anytime. No All right. So I'm thinking it's best if we maybe start with you telling us how long the project has been going on for um, and maybe how the research is set up within the project. Thanks, guys. Yeah, so look, the Ningaloo Outlet Project was initiated in 2015 and uh, it's been going for just over seven years now. So, um, yeah, it's, that's one of the, the strengths of the work really has been the, the length of the, the project to date. The project's got sub-research areas um, mm-hmm. and there's four of those at the moment. So there's a, um, a whale shark theme, there's a turtle theme that Matt will be talking about. Super cute. <laughs> Very. The turtles are, yep. And uh, two reef themes, so a shallow and a deep. Yep. Yes. And, uh, and then we have our PhD programs. Um, so there's one PhD student attached to each of those um, sub-projects. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. So when you say that like it started about seven years ago. So in terms of COVID and the pandemic, like did that affect any of your research or was it easier or did it change anything? Yeah, so like a lot of um, research projects, we've really had to adapt to, you know, some new challenges there. So yeah. we've seen, for example, um, field surveys, you know, being postponed. You know, we've okay. had to um, be flexible in terms of, you know, who's available and when. And and also, you know, we do most of our work um, as land-based work. So we stay in, you know, local accommodation, et cetera. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, we've seen with the pandemic, the, the number of tourists travelling to Ningaloo has increased dramatically. So, oh, of um, course, yes. Subsequently, yeah, you know, just even finding accommodation now, I think we're booking two years in advance. Wow. Wow. That's so, intense. Crazy. Yeah. And, okay. uh, yeah, so, yeah, we just had to be uh, a little bit flexible, you know, about how we, how we get the work done now. Mm. Mm. Yeah. In terms of COVID, though, I was just wondering, did COVID have any effect on the actual research you found or was it all pretty not affected? Yeah, no, great question. So one of the, you know, one of the things about Ningaloo is people often talk about it being loved to death and, (laughs) you know, with a beautiful reef system such as what Ningaloo is and the pandemic and people unable to travel internationally, you know, they've seen tourist numbers skyrocket over the last few years. And, Mm. and of course, everyone that goes to Ningaloo wants to engage in some way, usually with the natural environment. So, you know, that could be through fishing or that could be through uh, tours or snorkeling. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, the area, um, you know, if you talk to a lot of the locals, you know, it's, it's in some ways groaning under the weight of being loved so much. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, we've, You know, anecdotally, we've heard um, uh, stories, for example, increased fishing pressure in certain areas, Um, you know, people targeting uh, slightly different fish species. Some of those effects are quite difficult to tease out in the data, but, um, you know, it's quite plausible that 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 is having an impact on on some of the um, flora and fauna, the animals and the plants in the area. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that we're now seven years into the project, but you did mention they're in two different projects of five-year blocks. Just wanted to know, was the result after your first five years what you were expecting? Did it exceed your expectations of the kind of research and information that you managed to find in those first five? Yeah, look, we're really lucky with the first project being five years long. You know, that gave us a really good opportunity to sink our teeth into, you know, 
four of the um, areas of interest and, you know, we were able to, you know, really address some of the knowledge gaps in those areas. Yeah. Um, so, for example, with the, you know, with the whale sharks, um, you know, there's now over, over 400 whale sharks that have been identified. There's tissue samples from those whale sharks, you know, satellite tags of over 40 sharks. You know, they're talking to the theme lead this morning, Rich, he was saying, you know, one of the satellite tag sharks, um, Big Mama, you know, they, <laughs> they actually managed to retrieve the tag back oh, from wow. that shark, which enables to, them to access a whole range of additional data. So, yeah, you know, course. diving movements and things mm. like that. And, you know, that tag was found by DBCA and, you know, they knew because we've developed that working relationship mm-hmm. with them over a five-year period. Um, yeah, that, you know, that they quickly contacted us, were able to get the tag back, get all that information. Um, so, you know, that was a direct result of you know, the, the length of that, that first project. That's and, great. That's um, yeah, BHP were great. You know, we started discussions about continuing the work. Um, yeah, they were very, very oh, supportive. Wow. So, that's great. Yeah, it's um, yeah, very fortunate to be able to roll that over into another five-year project. Yeah, it makes project. it a lot easier. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. Also, and, just out of curiosity... <laughs> Do you name all of the animals that you tag? Yeah. <laughs> That's a great question for Matt. And uh, <laughs> yeah, they they do. I think they uh, ran a naming competition with one of the uh, the early um, turtle tagging um, field trips, oh, and cool. uh, I think all of the uh, turtles and whale sharks with satellite tags have been um, have been named I think in many cases by local school students. Oh that's oh, great. Yeah. And so you can go onto the um, tagging tracking website mm-hmm. and yeah you know the kids can see you know oh, the animals that they've named and where they've been and oh, that's um, great. yeah so that's amazing. I've been quite creative with some of the names I can't recall them all <laughs> but yeah Big Mama was one of them. That's <laughs> Well, yeah, because we've seen that um, you do engage quite a lot with like the Exmouth School and the Cape Conservation Group and everything. So how do you sort of engage with the community? Yeah, that's, you know, one of the great things about working up at Ningaloo. There's this really vibrant and super motivated local community and, yeah. and they're very uh, engaged with the with the natural environment. So, um, you know, early on it became um, obvious that there were some great groups that we needed to connect with, um, groups like the Exmouth Senior High School, um, yeah, Primary definitely. School. So, you know, we've been building that relationship now over seven years. We go up there um, at least once a year and um, chat to the kids about various things, oh. run pool exercises and uh, oh. school kids come out and they help with the turtle tagging work Cute. And, <laughs> and last year yeah a couple of the students were on board and helped with some of the whale shark tagging work as well wow. so yeah it's been fantastic that you know that's been one of the real success stories yeah with that's the an project. amazing Definitely. opportunity for those kids yeah and uh you know other volunteer groups like the cape conservation group yeah uh, yes. and reef check you know we've been able to incorporate some of the data that was collected with the cape conservation group on corals um and that's been incorporated into into the work that we do. The debris cleanup groups. Yes. So you know, there's fantastic uh, associations like Tangaroa Blue, mm-hmm. and uh, also I think um, Jamie and Bass Van Jones at Salty Times. You know, they've uh, we've worked quite closely with those groups uh, in the debris work that we've been doing. Mm. And you know, even the you know, there's a lot of long-term local service providers like Ningaloo Aviation and you know Yardi Creek um, Caravan Park. You know, yes. they've mm. you know they've been really supportive <laughs> with all the work that we've done, and you know that's we couldn't so have done cool. it yeah without without their support. So yeah, that's you know that's been another great thing about having a long-term project like this is you know we've we've built some really terrific relationships. Yeah, with, yeah get connections. Yeah, definitely. with the local groups. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of now being in our second block of the project, how has that first kind of five years helped dictate what your focus is for the second half? Yeah, so at the start of the first five-year project, we sat down with, you know, a bunch of groups like DBCA, the uh, Parks Group, and and really tried to narrow down some of the knowledge gaps um, yeah. for, for research in the area. And then that first five years, we, we started to work on trying to address some of those knowledge gaps. And invariably, they usually lead to more questions. Yeah, of and, course. <laughs> uh, yeah, those questions form the basis of the second project. Yeah. Um, so what were so, like the top three knowledge gaps that you sort of found and wanted to work? Yeah, to so <laughs> I'll probably talk 
first to the shallow reefs because that's the one I've had more involvement with. Yeah, and, yes. um, you know, we sat down there and we realised that, you know, there's been a lot of research on corals and fish at Ningaloo over the last 30 odd years, mm-hmm. but something like 90% of that research was all in the lagoon or wow. on the reef flat oh, area. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, you know, understandably, that's a, a, the easier place to work. You know, it's very windy, big waves, etc. So, yeah, we sat back and thought, well, you know, do we have the capability to actually um, extend that work out onto the more exposed reef slope area, which is, you know, very extensive. When you look at like aerial photos and the like, the lagoon area, while it's very important, it actually only constitutes a fairly small part of the, the Ningaloo reef track. So, okay. interesting. Yeah, so we sat about uh, designing a program where we could actually collect information on coral and fish out on that reef slope, and, and that's cool. been really successful. Oh, that's good. I think, you know, with the turtles, Matt's done a fantastic job of, improving our knowledge of you know diets so for the green turtles yep. um much better understanding through stable isotope work now on on what they eat and where they eat it mm-hmm. yes um movement you know the turtles where they go um how long they're resident for and then some of the more recent work you know how quickly they grow so using you know really cutting edge eDNA techniques to get a better handle on how fast the green turtles grow and yeah. how how big they are at different ages. Um, so there are probably two knowledge gaps that were identified early on, and the whale sharks. You know they're incredibly difficult and expensive beast to study. And yeah, there would be been lots of groups working on the on the whale sharks, and you know Rich has done a fantastic job of you know sitting down and working out how we can um, complement. Number one, the work that's gone before and, and also two, the, the work that's being done by other research bodies at the moment. And they're, um, yeah, for example, looking at uh, movement patterns of the, you know, the whale sharks. They, they now know from that big mama track that, you know, mm-hmm. they go right up past Ashmore Reef and can, you know, track back down to um, Shark Bay. Yeah, uh, and wow. also much better understanding of, you know, how much time they're spending at depth and mm-hmm. how, how quickly they dive and things like that. So, yeah, the three knowledge gaps that, yeah, they've cool. um, you know, certainly improved our, our knowledge of over the last yeah, seven years. Wow, yeah. that's really cool. So we mentioned that this project is in partnership with BHP. How did they start with that initiation? How did the partnership come to be? Yeah, look, we're really fortunate. I think it was around 2012 that um, we got together with a couple of representatives from BHP and started to talk about um, how we would put together a long-term research project um, and what that would look like. And so, yeah, that was... um, Those conversations started at the um, International Coral Reef Society Conference in 2012, um, which was, I think, in Hawaii. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it took us a couple of years to to work that up and um, turn it into something that was um, useful and, uh, you know, met the needs of um, both BHP and CSIRO. And, yeah, so uh, that's where it kicked off. And, yeah, it's been a fantastic partnership. That's really good. Yeah. And so as the project leader of this, what is your like sort of main responsibility? Are you organising everyone? Are you coming up with new ideas for research or? Oh, look, I'm really lucky. There's an absolutely fantastic team. Um, You know, we have really good theme leads for Mm -hmm. all of the themes. Yeah. So, you know, my job is really just herding cats. And (laughs) uh, I do this with um, the assistance of a terrific coordinator, uh, Joe Myers. Yeah. Yeah. So we basically just work to try to keep the project on track in terms of meeting mm-hmm. our milestone obligations. Of course, yeah. Um, you know, make sure we're spending the money in the right areas and not spending too much of it too fast. And yeah, <laughs> That's got to be a struggle, <laughs> exercising yeah. the self-control. We've yes. been, yeah. Yeah, well, we've, you know, some we do very well some years and not so well others. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the impacts also of... Um, COVID, COVID, yeah, yes. you know, unexpected expenses and having of to course, yeah, yeah. adjust where we spend the money there. Mm. Um, yeah, and then really just helping, um, you know, manage personnel, so who's available, um, who can help out on the different projects uh, and equipment. But uh, yeah, for the most part, you know, I, I really just do administrative work and as the project lead and uh, yeah, the, the themes are largely self-sufficient, you know, yeah. they, they're um, entirely capable and do a fantastic job of yeah, running the the four different areas. Yeah. Um, 
Just a bit of a cheeky question. Is there an area that you <laughs> prefer more on the project? That you have more of a interest and connection with or are you like pretty all round with all of them? I'm a little bit old school. I still love the diving work. I yeah. love getting underwater and having that, you know, that reconnection with what got me involved in marine science right at the start. Yeah. And, uh, you know, although we are moving away from um, diver-based techniques okay. and, you know, okay. looking at incorporating things like autonomous underwater vehicles and yeah. and other, other um, you know, non-diver-based methods, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, there's still nothing that quite compares to being underwater and actually yeah. Um, yeah, seeing definitely. a lot of this. So. That's, yeah, that's something that I love doing, being part of the annual surveys um, as part of the Shallow Reefs project. And, mm. cool. you know, there's, it's, I think, you know, my screensaver at the moment is the view looking back toward the coast from our reef slope survey oh, sites. Oh, gorgeous. It's, yeah, on days where you're just tearing your hair out, you've had enough. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The administration's driving you nuts. Yeah, um, Yeah, you look at that and, yeah, incredibly calming. Oh, yeah. that's lovely. That's so nice. And how do you feel about sending robots or machines down mm. underwater instead of people, I guess? <laughs> yeah, look, there's, a, there's still a role for both. Um, yeah. You know, we're getting better at um, developing technologies that can take more observations faster. Of course. And more safely. That's yeah. the other the big yes. um, kicker these days. So, um, you know, the, the technologies are getting better all the time. Um, you know, some of them are now really well developed Mm -hmm. and uh you know some are still what we just call in that sort of pilot phase um yeah and it's it's about getting the balance right so you know combining new more novel techniques with your established you know more robust techniques yeah definitely uh, yeah moving forward and yeah that's you know and it's again that's one of the great things about the length of this project is we've seen technologies develop over the course course of the project and things that we couldn't rely on at the start of the project you know we're now getting to the point where you know they're robust enough that yeah we can say yeah we're quite happy with the results that they produce yeah so, yeah, that's quite exciting. Um, and, yeah, you know, who knows what the future will hold. Yeah, it's um, just going to continue to, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, some of the, the new eDNA techniques, for example, are really exciting. Um, you know, being able to take a small small sample uh, and, in you know, in some cases not even um, injure the animal. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, and determine things such as, um, you know, diets and age and, you know, where they're spending a lot of time feeding and things like that. So, yeah, yeah you know, it's really exciting. Yeah, it That's is. That's amazing. With your work on this project, what was sort of the highlight for you? Oh, there's lots, but probably professionally seeing the graduation of our first round of PhD uh, candidates um, toward the end of the first Outlook project. Um, That was fantastic. You know, they've gone on to work for international and national level research uh, organisations. And um, yeah, you know, we saw, you know, the students at the start of their projects, you know, a little bit unsure as they always are and, you know, working Mm. through the pro, you know, a whole range of problems. And then by the end, you know, the well, the lady I had experience with, Anna Creswell, um, she became an incredibly confident and immensely capable, um, yeah, researcher. And, uh, yeah, you know, you can imagine she'll go on to have a fantastic career. Yeah, um, that's amazing. amazing. And also the school engagement, you know, that was something that um, we didn't foresee growing as much as it did yeah. when mm-hmm. we first started the project, but mm-hmm. it's been fantastic. You know, the kids are heavily involved in the turtle work. Um, they now go out and help with the, <laughs> yeah, the whale shark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we get to, you know, we get the privilege of going up to the school and chatting to the to the kids about oh. things like debris. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's terrific. Yeah. Really, really. Rewarding. Do you think that like by you engaging with the, like with the high school kids and anything, like you think that they might end up pursuing a career of like marine science or something and end up working with you guys? Oh, you'd love to think that you might spark an interest in, yeah, one or two. Yeah, yeah definitely. Students. And, um, you know, without question, there's, you know, there's a whole range, obviously, of, mm-hmm. of kids in the class. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, some of them are, you know, incredibly knowledgeable and, and seem really, really interested. So, yeah, I'd love to love to walk away thinking that, um, yeah, they're going to go on and perhaps have a, you know, happy happy working yeah. life um, oh. doing something in the in the marine space. Yeah. That would be Lovely. so cool to see. Yeah, like, definitely. <laughs> it would be amazing. Yeah. 
Right. Well, thanks for chatting, thanks for with, chatting us. with us. Yeah, oh, really. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah a lot of fun. Been. Yeah, really interesting really conversation. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>